Hello everyone, my name is Legend Ronnie and this game is Rise of Kingdoms. Now, in this video you probably read the title already, it's gonna be the best of the best of the best and only the best for the best players and best people that can do the best out there for everything that is the best. Right, in this video <laughs> I'm just going to show you my builds. So I'm just gonna show you exactly the builds that I'm using for either defending, for either attacking cavalry and I'm gonna name and do builds that I recommend which you should use in the actual battle. Plus some of the builds that I would recommend which Probably I don't have the commanders yet ready for that, but mostly I'm just gonna show what I'm using in the battle So I'm gonna go with what is good at PvP, what is good at rallying and what is good at, at defending uh, These three points we're gonna cover including the talent builds So before I'm gonna go any further with this there are a couple of things that I have to mention and most of you guys already know them so the first thing that I'm gonna mention is every legendary commander before you're gonna start leveling him up you need to keep him at uh, one star until you max out his first skill so you need to max out his first skill and then you can proceed forward and unlock his second star third star or four star in some situation it's better if you keep him at second star and just maxed out his second skill as well for the epic commanders you don't necessarily need to apply it does help that but you don't necessarily need to apply why because they are very easy to max out a legendary commander to max out his entire skills you need 690 sculptures that is 690 and i do have a picture right here which uh, which i can bring it up just give me a moment and basically this is go is gonna help you out a lot more so I'm just gonna bring this one up, okay, and yeah, I have to make it smaller, there you go. So basically this is for all the commanders, it also tells you for each skill point how many sculptures you need. So you see the legendary there is a total of 690 and I'll just make it a little bit smaller because it looks like that writing is going to cover it. So 690 for the legendary is 440 for the epics and then the other one. So for the first level you're noticing that it's very very cheap but as you keep increasing keep increasing they go very very expensive and the last ones they are really really expensive. That many sculptures for a legendary is quite a lot. Um, right now in terms of stars in order to max out the stars of a legendary all together from one to six stars you need about 600 or 700 give or take and that's the regular stars four to five is about 150 five to six is about four 450 the epic ones they are much much less is like a hundred for four to five and five to six is like 300 now that being said, let's proceed forward. The talents only work from the main commander. They apply to the second in command, they apply to your army, but they only work from the main commander. So the second in command, whichever is gonna be, is just a skill carrier. Yes, I think that's pretty much about. This is very important information, guys, that many of you actually don't know or they are mistaken about them. The first build that I'm going to talk about is my infantry build. That is Richard I and Charles Martel. So they are the strongest infantry build for uh, pay to win, if you want to call it like that. But they also work for free to play or uh, very low spenders. Because they, once you manage to max out their first skill of Ch Richard and Charles, they become very very strong their first skill is probably the strongest skills uh, they have so once you manage to max that one out they become very very strong they are doing great with just infantry so if you have them both together they are like inseparable un both together they are very very strong i usually put richard the first as uh, my main infantry leader the reason why is because charles martel is a very good uh, city defender so that's the main reason why my Charles Martel is actually the main leader. 
The second reason is because of his healing. So because he does healing, he does damage reduction, then the shield from Martel, in theory, uh, should last a little bit longer or should be a little bit stronger. Because the main skill is always boosted by the amount of troops that you have in your group. So if you heal up troops, then you recover some troops and obviously the shield is going to be a little bit better. But it's so insignificant, it doesn't matter. You can put Charles main commander, it's all the same. But for me, my Charles Martel is on Garrison. So if I go on his talents, this is my infantry build that I'm using on him. So you can see that at level 60, I have maxed infantry and I have max defense. If you want to see the steps, how you should upgrade them, I have them all on my Discord. The Discord is going to be on the description of the video and you'll find them all on my Discord server. There is a talent tree uh, channel and you'll find them all there if you want to do them steps. They are with colors and everything so you can do them by steps. Right, now what is infantry really good at? Or what is this setup really good at? PvP, they excel the best in PvP. They are the most defensive build you can create for PvP. Uh, they are not very fast. This is something you might want to keep in mind. They are not very fast, but they are very, very strong. And they survive significantly a lot. You can also rally them. You can also rally cities if that is what you want. So they are good in rallies as well. I do a lot of infantry rallies. It has ups and downs. So it has ups and downs when you want to rally. If you want to rally a really strong players, you don't want to do just an infantry rally. So if you want to rally a well, for example, you want to send this rally as a tanking rally and you want to send separate rallies for damage dealing or debuffing like Julius Caesar and Barca, for example. But if you just want a tanking rally, then you can definitely go with um, Richard and Charles and just a full infantry. Some of you have seen my videos and you have seen what uh, they can do, so it's pretty pretty crazy. In defense, they can work in defense as well. Richard has a pretty intense uh, defensive capabilities. They are some of the best defenders for flags, passes, uh, shrines, whatever the reason is because of the defense talent build so for that particular role you need the defense talent build there are some other options you can get from the infantry which uh, like call of the pack you get some more rage and probably you can get some hold the line which is also pretty significant so if you want to defend passes flags uh, shrines or anything that it doesn't include a city the garrison one only works in the city then you need the defense and some of the infantry ones uh, for city defending this particular build it also works really really great but then you have to put charles martel leading so this is the talent for my city defense on my charles martel he's a level 60 i have a full garrison build i have the studio formation i'm a fan of the studio formation i know uh, if you're not happy with the studio formation, you can always take them off and you can go for loose formation. If you want to get reduced skill damage, then you can definitely go for loose formation. You get increased counterattack damage on your way. And I'm not entirely sure if it's enough, but no, you will not get no weaknesses. I think you have to drop some from here to get no weaknesses. But yeah, if you think you're generating enough rage, you can drop undying you can drop attack, you can drop the studio formation and you can go for loose formation and no weaknesses. Or again, if you're, if you're not happy with uh, Undying Rage and attack of the infantry, if you believe it's too small, you can also go for balance, which reduces damage taken by another 3% because there's going to be one point here and three points there and all, is, all you have to take off is those two. It's just a matter of opinions. I have this one for me it works really great. Now Charles Martel is my main <clears throat> city defender. You can use Richard the first if you want as a as a city defender or you can use another nuker. Almost any other nuker. They do great. 
in the end you also need to destroy the army that is attacking you not just dealing damage so this particular two commanders i believe that overall in the game they have the highest roles uh, where you can basically use them everywhere you use them in your city you use them in your battle you use them in your rallies you use them in defending fortresses flags passes uh, shrines so that's why they were my first two commanders that i got them to level 60 for that particular reason because they have too much utility overall in game now as a free to play option for infantry it would be Auji Mundok which uh, I don't really have him uh, leveled up so I can't really show you a build for him but you'll find it on my discord and as a second in command I usually recommend Scipio for Auji Mundok another op I'm sorry another option for your Auji Mundok it could be Sun Tzu. but if you go with Sun Tzu, you have to realize that it's gonna be a nuking build so the, I, I'm not sure if tanking nuking infantry it, it's actually a thing or if it actually works but if you want to try it definitely for free to play these are the only two infantry commanders that are out there and they both have nuking skills uh, so yeah, it's pretty weird if you want to ask me so and I'm not really happy about both of them But this is like the free the free to play version now for free to play to, for defending your city The best one that I would say is Eoji Mundok and Kusunoki. Where is Kusunoki? Yeah, and Kusunoki for free to play. These are the best two commanders you can put in your garrison from my opinion the talents, you'll find them on my Discord or I can just uh, bring it up. It's just too many uh, images that I have to bring up right now. But let me see if I can just pop Eulji Mundok at least. And then the Garrison. Yeah, there's quite a, a few of them that I have to bring up. El Cid, Eulji Mundok, Talents Garrison. Yeah, so this is the garrison talents for Eulji Mundok. You see that I managed to get a fortless, which is uh, pretty pretty nice. And I also got the rage. So basically, again, you have all the three rage. You have a lot of defense. You have attack and all that, which is pretty nice. Now, if I go ahead and bring the other one, which is the infantry. This is the infantry. If you plan to use your Eulji Mundok as infantry. I will have to take myself out and I don't want to do that right now so I do apologize I'm just I'm just trying to show it all right so this is the infantry build for him and then I'm gonna bring Kusunoki so Kusunoki is for garrison this is only yeah this is the garrison build for Kusunoki this is the one that I would advise if you're going to use Kusunoki as your main garrison commander. Right. Cavalry. My opinion is that Minamoto and Double C they are the best cavalry commander. Now the reason I'm saying that is because of the synergy of the skills they have together and uh, they are both of them they have attack and march speed so this is not the kind of build that you want to be tanky uh, this build is definitely not tanky this build is made for damage so the only thing that you should care about your Minamoto and double C is to deal damage the moment they are trying to target you you should always run away you have 10% march speed on both of them and you should in theory at least have um, a lot more march speed than your opponents. Once you get multiple targets on you, you should always bounce off. This is the second build that I managed to, to max out. This is the second build I cared about to max out because Kavari is very well known for their mobility. Just moving around and having mobility, this is also a, a very, very, very important 
task into the game so there you go it comes Miramoto and double C I don't have to talk about their skills you you can read that yourself this is the talent build from my Minamoto and I'm going to explain it a little bit if you are getting max research or very close to max research and you have a close to maxed out uh, double C like I have or even maxed out double C this is the talent build that I recommend now the reason I recommend this talent build is because of the amount of stats that you get on your cavalry. If you are max research, you have a lot of attack and defense on your cavalry and you want to boost that even more. Because at that point your Minamoto and double C will definitely do a lot of skill damage. So you don't want to increase their skill damage, you want to increase their survivability. So by doing that you need more stats on your cavalry and you need stuff like a blazonet shield, you need to reduce the enemies at attack having a chance and the rallying cry it actually gives you quite a um, huge impact on your opponents for the 10 seconds basically Minamoto is actually managing to do one skill before rallying cry is, is going away double C doesn't manage to do it but Minamoto does so Minamoto has a really huge impact when you just start uh, the battle with your enemies if you are not happy about rallying cry then you can always take it off this five talent points and you can put one three and five so you get more march speed on your cavalry you get another six percent march speed so if you're not happy about rallying cry because it's only 10 seconds while entering the battle this is like a general build that i use on minamoto right now if you are low in power, if you are like less than 30 million power, so mark my word, if you are less than 30 million power, that means your research is low, I recommend the full skill build. You will need clarity and you will need feral nature so you can deal as much skill damage as, as possible because that is what is going to do the most damage with your cavalry, the skill damage, when you don't have the research. So that's what you have to boost when you're low in power. When you're very high in power, you need to boost the survivability of your cavalry because you're already doing enough damage. This is just my opinion. This is how I think. So I'm using Minamoto with double C, which is this guy. This is why I call him double C. And uh, this guy's talents don't really matter that much. I go for the King of Mobility. You'll find it on my Discord. I call it the King of Mobility, which basically I'm trying to get all the march speed that is available in the tree. So I already have the peacekeeping. I already have this part from the cavalry, and now I'm going to get this part, which is another six percent march speed. I already have this one. I'm definitely gonna get that one, but I want hasty departure next. So this is what I'm going for next, hasty departure, I'm 3, 4, so that's going to be 7. Once I get hasty departure, I'm going to go for, for this Mars speed and then eventually in the future if I ever reach is this one. So to have the maximum Mars speed on him, if I ever use him as a main commander, that is the reason why. Just for Mars speed, just to be very very fast. To get somewhere you know or in the battle or in Ark of Osiris for damage for maximum damage and destruction is Minamoto main commander that's why he's level 60 and that's who I also recommend okay they can be used in rallies they can definitely be used in rallies the Kavari rallies they are very very popular taking down forts this is the best build uh, rallying cities it is a very good build, but not if you're going to attack high power players. So if you want to attack high power players, especially T5 players, I don't recommend full Cavs Rally. I definitely do not recommend. The reason why is because they do not have enough defense. Minamoto is really good in uh, rallying cities, but not double C. The, the damage is not enough for them to take down a city fast enough for a full Cav Rally. Attacking as a second rally a very strong city. Yes, that can work But not as the main the main rally if you want to hit uh, lower level cities with just calves then definitely so anything that is 30 million power or less 
if you just want to do a full care rally with maximum auto and double C, you will just demolish it, you will just destroy. So it's definitely worth it. For city defending, Minamoto is very very good as a second in command. If you don't have any other options, you can put him as main commander. But as a second in command, Minamoto is actually doing very good in city defense. You put a Charles Martel main, you put a Minamoto second, and there you go, you have a very nice defense. In very very weird situation, double C can actually help in defense. But I wouldn't advise it. I wouldn't advise him as a uh, city defender. The only reason in very rare situation is because he reduced the attack by 40%. That's the only reason. And if you have a lot of calves, you can see that there's like 55% attack on your calves. So if your calves just dominate in your city, that's a lot of bonus for your calves. And then you have the attack reduction. If, you, if the enemy is going to rally you. So that's the only reason. But it's very rare. I don't actually advise him. Minamoto, yes. Now, as free-to-play Cavs. Because that was pay-to-win Cavs. Free-to-play Cavs. I used Pelagius. And Belisarius. So that's my build. Pelagius and Belisarius. I know. Dragotin said that it's much better Babers. So this is the second option. You can put Babers a second to Pelagius if you want. Or you, you can put Babers first uh, and Belisario second. My advice is Pelagius and Belisarius. The synergy between the skills is really, really good. Now, this is the talents build that I have on my Pelagius. Now, you already seen the talent build from my Minamoto. And this is the build that I'm gonna do on Pelagius as well. But first, I wanted to get to reduce skill damage from a Blasonet shield and Heraldic shield because my Pelagius and Belisarius is a very tanking build. I'm so happy how they are doing on the battlefield, you have no idea. So my first course of action when I was doing his talent build was to make him even more tankier. And that's why I went this side, because I got even more stats on Cavalry, I got a Blazonet shield, I got Heraldic shield, so that's a lot of skill damage reduction, that's a lot of stats for my infantry. So in the end, I'm gonna max the Cavalry build, same as my Minamoto. I'm probably gonna get Latent Power, because that's gonna help Pelagius do some damage and Tactical Mastery. My Belisarius, if you want to see talent builds for him, you'll find them on Discord. But Pelagius main, Belisarius second. If you want to use him with Babers, you can do it. Babers is a decent cavalry commander. It will be a lot of nuking. It would be like a free to play version of uh, Minamoto and Double C. So if you go with Pelagius main and Babers second, it's gonna be like a free to play version of Minamoto and Pelagius. Because they both gonna do nuke with their main uh, main skills and they both increase the attack of your cavalry. So you have damage and nuke on the same build. <clears throat> so that's the that's the way uh, you can go with free to play cavalry. But as I mentioned, my advice is uh, Pelagius and Belisarius. How you can play this build for, for the best is by trying to abuse the fourth skill of Belisarius. One, two, play the role of as a debuffer. Because your attack reduction and defense reduction on your target. The reason I'm pairing him with uh, Pelagius is because he has rage restoration. Pelagius has rage restoration on, on his first skill. Uh, he has the skill talent path. And then he has healing as well. And on the same time, increase attack and defense of your cavalry. So if you play very smart with this build, you can play two roles. You have mobility. You can play the role as a debuffer, as I was mentioning. Or when the target is under 50%, you will deal a lot more damage on them. 25 extra percent. So I would say that... If you play really, really smart with Pelagius and Belisarius, you can actually do some damage or be very useful on the battlefield. In some situation, you can even tank. Not necessarily infantry. I wouldn't advise you to tank infantry, but archers. You can definitely tank some archers. 
if you have to with uh, Pelagius and Belisarius. In my Ark of Osiris I was being hit by five armies and surprisingly they were all going on yellow and while I was uh, getting on red. So that was for me was a victory when five armies they get reduced to nearly half and I'm just uh, spending one army. For me that was a, a really good victory. So yes I'm really happy how Pelagius and Belisarius they work together. The next setup is obviously going to be, well, I did mention for rallying, city defending. Pelagius can can work can be a good city defender as well. I'm not so happy about it. I already mentioned for free to play. I, I advise Ewulji and Kosunoki. If you don't have any option and if you have to use Pelagius as a city defender, then go ahead. But yeah. That's pretty much pretty much about it. For rallying cities, I wouldn't use Pelagius and um, and Belisarius, but I would use Pelagius and Babers. If you actually want with epic commanders to rally cities, but again, I don't advise it. If you want to rally cities and players, is the legendary commanders. That's the way to do it. Next one on the list is going to be archers. Now for my archers build. You have already seen that I use Julius Caesar, so there's nothing to hide about it. I use Julius Caesar with a maxed out YSG, which I'm pretty sure this is the build that most of you are hyped about. Uh, and yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how I'm going to use it. And I also use Herman with El Cid. Uh, surprisingly, with uh, special archers. Which I have, I'm with Ottomans now, so I have the Elite Janissary. They are doing quite well, surprisingly well. I'm talking about Herman and El Cid. But first, let's talk about the legendaries. Now, the best Archer pair that I believe is, is gonna be out there. There's already videos circulating and people are showing that they actually build anything. I still say that it's a matter of talents. Talents make a huge difference. It's just how people talent their commanders. El Cid and YSG. That is the best archer pair that uh, you can have or you know you can make. What I use for my archers as legendaries is Julius Caesar with my YSG. So this is the talent build for my Julius Caesar. Because I also use him for rally, so I have in the name of the king. This is for specific type of troops. So this is not for mixture of troops. If you know you're gonna use mixture of troops, then you need armored and armored. If you look on my build that I have done for Julius Caesar, you're gonna notice that I'm I'm most likely going to have armored and armored. That's because it's a general title. You know, to try to help everyone. 90% 95% of the people are using Julius Caesar with a mixture of troops. Probably I can go even higher than 95%. No one is actually thinking that he's uh, that good with just one type of troops. So I'm using him with just one type of troops, so I don't need armored and armored. Now, my Julius Caesar is 53, so he's ever obviously gonna get uh, a couple more talent points. And I'm just gonna get more stats to my troops. Martial Mastery, because I'm using YSG, I'm not entirely sure that I wanna go for it. Because it decreased active skill damage by 3%. The way I'm using this build is because YSG is doing a tremendously large of damage. It's being boosted by Julius Caesar, it also has a little bit of tankiness, so there you go. There is a very nice combination. If I'm gonna go for Martial Mastery, I'm not 100% sure, but my plan is to get Armored, is to get an Yielding, and probably I'm just gonna get more points from here to my troops, health, defense, and that's pretty much about it, because I only have 7 left, so that's 3, yeah, that's 3, 6, and 1 in Armored Joint, so that's gonna be 7. That's pretty much how my Julius Caesar is going to be. Because as I mentioned, I also use it for rally, that's why I have in the name of the king. For mix of troops, you need armored and armored. And then it's going to be less points on the attack. Right. <clears throat> uh, 
Now the next build of the archers that I'm using is Herman and Elcid, I already mentioned. So this is the talent that I have on, on uh, my Herman. My Herman is 54, so obviously at the end he's gonna have another 6 talent points. Now I'm up to debating it with the 6 talent points and this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna put another one more point in there so I get another defense of my archers and that means that I have the maximum bonus on my archers attack, health and defense. Uh, with Elcid you don't need latent power, Herman and Elcid you don't need latent power, then you have attack of all troops, then you have health and then you have march speed. Now you're probably wondering, because uh, that sounds a little bit crazy, well it does but uh, Herman increased the march speed of archers, Elcid increased the march speed of archers, so there's nothing wrong to have extra march speed, because that's some really fast, uh, that's some really fast archer build. And I'm telling you because I'm actually using them for farming and they are moving really damn fast. My Herman and my uh, LC, they are actually resprinting. So once I get this one done, it's going to be another 6% march speed. That's going to be even fast archers. And not to go any further, I have here on favorites. So there you go, this is Julius Caesar YSG. Well, Cuba J has very good commanders. If I go on the truth buff, you see he has a max research, Richard level 60, uh, 39 Charles Martel, which is fairly alright. But yeah, I have two maxed out legendaries. So that's my Julius Caesar and my YSG against his infantry. So I literally demolished him. And then this is the second try with my Herman and El Cid. And you see that even with my Herman and El Cid, I managed to demolish him. If I go on the troops buff, my El Cid is not yet maxed out, which it would have been a little bit more devastating. The troops, I had Janissary, tier 4. He had Rome Infantry, 150. In this attack I had to use 241,000 because I'm VIP 14 which is another 5% capacity I have Julius which gives me 15% plus 3% from the talents so I had to use the normal march that I had and I told him to use his normal march as VIP 14 you get another 10,000 troops so that was like normal march versus normal march so if it doesn't look fair that means that I would have to incapacitate Julius Caesar with his uh, talents right so I mentioned about Herman I mentioned about LC now if you want to rally cities I would use Julius Caesar and YSG with archers anytime I even proved it in some of my videos how effective they are when I was uh, rallying flags even cities they are just crazy. They, are, they do a tremendously large amount of damage. Julius Caesar and YSG, you can use them for rallies. They are really, really good. You, wanted, uh, you want to defend points in Ark of Osiris or you know, anywhere on the map? You can definitely do it. With Julius Caesar and YSG in the back, you will do a very good job. If you have no other options in city defending, you can definitely put Julius Caesar as a city defender. The second skill of Julius Caesar is pretty crazy and same is the main skill. The main, these two skills from Julius Caesar, they are literally insane even in defending. So if you don't have any options of defending, you don't have a Charles Martel like me, then you can definitely use your Julius Caesar. And a nuker behind can be even Minamoto. As a rally, as a city rally option, it can be again Julius Caesar and Minamoto. It's not going to be any problems. You can also put Julius Caesar. You can put with Barca, which is the most common city rally build. Everyone knows about it. Julius Caesar and Barca. Now Herman and El Cid. Definitely not good in cities. Uh, in rallies, so so, uh, they can work, but no, not so much. I would rather put LC with YSG if you actually if you actually want to send a uh, archers rally. So LC and YSG, yes, but Herman and LC, no. 
for single target Herman and Nelsi they are doing great so if it's actually one target that you want to pin down or you want to focus on Herman and Nelsi they are doing a good job with just archers as free to play for archers I would suggest Herman and uh, Kusunoki well it's kind of some of the only options the, or, the other options which you know is a little bit risky it can be Herman and Osman or Herman and Budica with just archers so with just archers but my opinion would be Herman and Kusunoki some of the people are telling me that Herman and Osman they are doing a tremendously large amount of damage because Herman and Osman are the only ones that have this insane amount of damage factor once they obtain the expertise so there is no other epic commanders that deal more damage factor than these two not to mention that osman has the sword of osman which is additional damage after each skill herman can be used as a garrison commander but i'm not highly hyped about him as i mentioned i recommend eulji or kusunoki any other ones should be just temporary for free to play all right now next thing i can talk about is maybe just mixture of troops for mixture of troops is definitely julius caesar and it comes my boy frederick these two commanders they are really good for mixture of troops for rallying cities i forgot to mention mehmed this is the only place where I actually find Mehmed one of the best. But as a second in command, so Julius Caesar and Mehmed or Hannibal Barca and Mehmed for rallying cities, I highly recommend them. For mixture of crews, PvP, Julius Caesar and Frederick, they can do a very nice pair or again the most common build, Julius Caesar and Hannibal Barca. This can work as well, you know, for mixture of troops. You can use them for rally as well, Julius Caesar and Hannibal Barca. And again, Julius Caesar and Frederick, you can use them for rally as well. They both uh, siege cities. So Julius Caesar, I would say that is one of the most interesting commander that is in the game. He has a lot of utilities. After Richard and Charles Martel, I personally find Julius Caesar right now uh, the most utility commander there is in the game next one after julius caesar i find minamoto after after minamoto i find ysg hannibal barca double c and elcid mehmed and frederick their utility is too small frederick is a very good pvp commander but that's pretty much about it if you want to attack cities I didn't find his nuke as great as it should be when you attack city fortresses or any other objectives. I've seen Max Frederick in action in, uh, in those particular roles and I was not happy. Mehmed, his utility is again too small just hitting cities. That's where I, I found him excelling in just hitting cities. So for that particular reason I can't uh, you know rank him like so high free to play version of rallying and attacking cities it's Scipio and Osmo now whichever you want to put as main commander is entirely up to you but personally again I don't advise hitting cities with you know epic commanders they are called legendary for a reason and you know they actually do the job now in terms of the talents I would most likely use the same talents even for rallying cities i'm not so happy about the conquering path i already mentioned about it and if you're going to use mixture of troops then you definitely need armored armored so you probably have to tune down some of the attack talents and go for armored and armored for rally you definitely need in the name of the king for more bonus to your rally barca has the, the same talent build so it's probably gonna be the same thing Again, on my Discord, you're going to find all the talents and everything else. Well, I hope you find this video interesting. As I mentioned, this is something that I use or what I use. These are my talent builds. I just show them. There is nothing to hide. 
and I'm happy how they work. But yes, I find Julius Caesar so useful lately and with YSG is doing so great. I'm I'm just so hyped. I'm literally hyped 100% hyped about this build right now. And unfortunately the video went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but there was a little bit to talk about. Uh, that's pretty much about it. I can show you to complete this video since I'm mentioning why is uh, Julius Caesar so used. No, these are arc battles. So this is when we attack the city. So this is Julius Caesar and Minamoto. When we attack a city, you can see that it's a level 50 Julius Caesar. I'm not sure if... Oh yeah, it was maxed out at this point. So that was a Eulji Mundok and a Sun Tzu defending. But if you check over here, we only use Siege. So we only use a full Siege Rally. You can see that it's you know, tier 4, 3, 2, whatever people have Siege. And we managed to take down a player that was in an alliance, max worth and everything. <clears throat> so if we look at the siege units attack is 80%, defense 87 and health 56.5%. So we took down a city with just, uh, just siege. I find this very very successful. Uh, this one is... A rally, uh, no, this is a full infantry rally. This is infantry again, infantry. This is Dragotin infantry. Oh my god! Oh, so this is again. Uh, This is again Julius Caesar Minamoto. Julius Caesar Minamoto only only siege. Julius Caesar Minamoto. I thought I have some Julius Caesar and YSG, but I don't have saved up. So this is how important Julius Caesar and how good Julius Caesar is. As I mentioned, he's a very useful commander. But again before you want to go ahead and start investing in a general commander or universal commander because that's how i consider julius caesar uh, that's how i consider Boudica, that's how i consider scipio osman who else frederick mehmed barca these are universal commanders or general commanders that can be used almost anywhere but not excel all the time the best first commanders that you always want to focus and max out is always a specialization commander because that specialization commander once he's going to have only those types of specific of troops they are going to be really really strong so this is my advice so far if there is anything i miss i do apologize it but i believe that is a little bit complete about what i'm using and what i'm advising or what is the best that you can do on the battlefield both Pay to win and free to play. Until next time, this is your boy Legend Ronnie signing out. Peace out, yo, and take care.